discuss different methods organizations can employ to identify potential security threats and vulnerabilities, emphasizing the importance of proactive identification. Is it a proactive identification is unnecessary as reactive measures are sufficient to address security threats? Is it B, regular security audits, vulnerability scanning and penetration testing are proactive identification methods? Is it C, identification methods exclusively rely on user reports and incident responses? Or is it D, organizations should focus on identifying threats only after an incident has occurred? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is B. Regular security audits, vulnerability scanning, and penetration testing are proactive identification methods. Proactive identification involves regular security audits, vulnerability scanning, and penetration testing to detect threats before incidents occur. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, proactive identification is crucial to detect threats before they manifest into security incidents. Proactive measures are essential. Option C, while user reports are valuable, relying solely on reactive incident responses is not sufficient for comprehensive security. User reports are one aspect, but proactive methods are vital. And option D, waiting until after incidents occur can result in significant damage. Proactive identification is essential for security. Proactive identification Identification is more effective as well. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, explain the steps organizations should take in response to the identification of vulnerabilities, focusing on effective remediation strategies. Is it A, organizations should prioritize vulnerability response based on the popularity of affected software? Is it B, remediation involves solely applying patches without considering potential impacts on existing systems? Is it C, effective vulnerability responses include prioritizing vulnerabilities based on risk and applying patches or implementing compensating controls? Or is it D, vulnerability response and remediation are unnecessary as vulnerabilities re uh, rarely lead to security incidents? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Effective vulnerability response includes prioritizing vulnerabilities based on risk and applying patches or implementing compensating controls. And now for the incorrect answers, popularity does option A, popularity does not necessarily correlate with risk. Organizations should prioritize based on actual risk. Risk-based prioritization is more effective. Option B, effective remediation considers potential impacts on uh, to ensure that applying patches does not disrupt existing systems. Impacts on existing systems should be considered. And option D, ignoring vulnerabilities increases the likelihood of security incidents. Eff effective response is essential. Vulnerabilities pose significant risks. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, discuss the importance of validating the effectiveness of remediation if efforts after addressing identified vulnerabilities, emphasizing continuous improvement. Is it A, validation of remediation is unnecessary as organizations can rely on the assumption that all vulnerabilities are successfully addressed? Is it B, validation involves solely checking if patches are applied without assessing the overall impact on security? Is it C, continuous improvement includes regularly assessing and validating the effectiveness of remediation efforts? Or is it D, organizations should validate remediation only when required by external regulations? Choose one answer. In our five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Continuous improvement involves regularly assessing and validating the effectiveness of remediation efforts for ongoing security enhancement. And now for the incorrect answers, relying solely on assumptions may result in overlooked vulnerabilities. Validation is crucial. Uh, assumptions can lead to oversights. Uh, option B. Effective validation assesses not only patch application, but also the broader impact on overall security. Overall impact should be considered. And option D, continuous validation is essential for ongoing security improvement, not just for regulatory compliance. Continuous validation enhances security beyond regulatory requirements. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, explain the significance of monitoring computing resources in maintaining a secure environment, highlighting the role of continuous monitoring. Is it A, monitoring computing resources is exclusively the responsibility of the IT department? Is it B, continuous monitoring is unnecessary as periodic checks are sufficient for security? 
is at sea, monitoring computing resources involves solely tracking hardware utilization, excluding software and network monitoring, or is it D, continuous monitoring of computer resources aids in real-time threat detection and facilitates prompt incident response? Choose one answer. You now five seconds. And the correct answer is D. Continuous monitoring of computing resources aids in real-time threat detection and facilitates prompt incident response. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. Monitoring computing resources requires collaboration across departments for comprehensive security. Monitoring involves collaboration across departments. Option B. Periodic checks may miss real-time threats. Continuous monitoring enhances security. Continuous monitoring provides real-time insights. And option C, comprehensive monitoring considers both hardware and software, as well as network activities for effective security. Comprehensive monitoring includes software and network monitoring. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, discuss the types of activities organizations should engage in to maintain a proactive and effective security posture, emphasizing the importance of regular training and awareness programs. Is it A, training and aware awareness programs are unnecessary as employees are expected to naturally adhere to security practices? Is it B, regular training and awareness programs contribute to employee knowledge, fostering a security conscious culture? Is it C, engaging in security activities is solely the responsibility of the security team, excluding non-security personnel? Or is it D, organizations should rely solely on technology solutions and automation, excluding human-centric security activities? Choose one answer. In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B. Regular training and awareness programs contribute to employee knowledge, fostering a security-conscious culture. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, training and awareness programs are essential for ensuring that employees are well informed about security practices, training is enhances adherence to security practices, option C, security is a shared responsibility, non-security personnel should also engage in security activities, and option D, while security, while technology is important, human-centric security activities are crucial for a comprehensive security posture. And now for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, discuss the importance of using various security tools in an organization's cybersecurity strategy, emphasizing the roles of intrusion detection systems, or IDS, antivirus software, and security information and event management, or SIEM tools. Is it A, security tools are unnecessary as manual monitoring is sufficient for detecting and responding to threats? Is it B, intrusion detection systems, antivirus software, and SIEM tools play crucial roles in a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy? Is it C, security tools focus solely on preventing external threats and do not address internal risks? Or is it D, organizations should rely exclusively on a single security tool for all cybersecurity needs? Choose one answer. In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B. Intrusion detection systems, antivirus software, and SIEM tools are integral components of a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. Automated security tools enhance real-time threat detection and response capabilities. Manual monitoring may miss real-time threats. Option C. Comprehensive security tools address a range of threats, both in internal and external. Security tools addresses both external and internal risks. And option D, different security tools uh, serve distinct purposes and the diverse approach is essential for robust cybersecurity. A multi-tool approach is more effective. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, explain the role of firewalls and network security, emphasizing their functions in controlling incoming and outgoing traffic and preventing unauthorized access. Is it A, firewalls are only effective for inbound traffic and do not contribute to outbound traffic control? Is it B, the primary purpose of firewalls is to allow unrestricted access to all network resources. Is it C, firewalls control both inbound and outbound traffic, preventing unauthorized access and ensuring network security? Or is it D, organizations should disable firewalls to streamline network communication and improve speed? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Firewalls control both inbound and outbound traffic, preventing unauthorized access and ensuring network security. And now for the incorrect answers, option A, firewalls are designed to control both inbound and outbound traffic to maintain security. Firewalls control both directions. Option B, firewalls are implemented to restrict access, not to provide unrestricted access to network resources. 
and option D, disabling firewalls compromise network security. They should remain active for protection. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, discuss the role of web filters in cybersecurity, focusing on their ability to block malicious websites, control access to certain content categories, and enhance overall internet security. Is it A, web filters are ineffective and do not contribute to preventing access to malicious website? Is it B, web filters of only control access to specific content categories and have no impact on internet security? Is it C, web filters play a crucial role in blocking malicious websites, controlling content access, and enhancing overall internet security? Or is it D, organizations should disable web filters to provide unrestricted internet access to employees? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Web filters are integral in blocking malicious websites, controlling content access, and improving overall internet security. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. Web filters are designed to be effective in preventing access to malicious, malicious websites. Web filters are effective in blocking malicious websites. Option B. Web filters not only control content access, but also play a role in enhancing internet security. And option D, disabling web filters exposing, exposes organizations to potential security threats. They should remain active for protection. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, outline the key measures organizations should implement to enhance operating system security, including regular updates, user privilege management, and secure configuration. Is it A, operating system security is ir irrelevant as modern operating systems are inherently secure, is it B, organizations should prioritize user convenience over secure configuration and updates? Is it C, regular updates, user privilege management, and secure conf uh, configuration are crucial for enhancing operating system security? Or is it D, secure configuration and updates are unnecessary as user privilege management alone suffices for operating system security? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Regular updates, user privilege management, and secure configurations are vital for enhancing operating system security. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. While modern operating systems incorporate security features, additional measures are crucial. Security me measures remain essential. Option B. Prioritizing user convenience over security can lead to vulnerabilities. Both are, are important. Security should not be compromised for convenience. And option D, user privilege management alone is insufficient. A combination of measures is necessary for robust security. All measures are essential. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, don't forget to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now jumping back to our question, explore the significance of implementing secure protocols such as HTTPS in safeguarding communications over network, emphasizing encryption and data integrity. Is it A, secure protocols like HTTPS have no impact on the security of network communication? Is it B, encryption and data integrity are unnecessary for secure communication over networks? Is it C, implementing secure protocols including HTTPS is crucial for ensuring encryption and maintaining data integrity during network communication? Or is it D, organizations should rely solely on traditional non-secure protocols for network communication? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Implementing secure protocols including HTTPS is crucial for ensuring encryption and maintaining data integrity during network communication. And now for the incorrect answers, option A. Secure protocols significantly contribute to the security of network communication. Secure protocols enhance, se enhance security. Option B. Encryption and data integrity are essential components of secure communication over networks. Encryption and data integrity are fundamental for security. And option D. Traditional non-secure protocol expose communications to security risks. Secure protocols should be preferred. Traditional protocols lack the security features of secure protocols. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys next time.